Assalamu alaikum. It's a series of lecture where we uh, study the 10 page at a row and it is the obstetric part. Hope you enjoy. Starts with this type 2 osteogenesis imperfect. A patient comes with the complaints of multiple fracture. A patient comes with a multiple fracture, there is blue sclera, short femur, hypoplastic thoracic cavity, fetal growth restriction. If a baby comes with such feature, that means a uh, multiple fracture uh, and you have uh, found that there is different types of healing present short femur hypoplastic thoracic cavity blue sclera growth restriction and then you will do the collagen and you found that there is a collagen defect there is type 1 collagen defect and then you will get the diagnosis that it is osteogenesis in part it is autosomal dominant disease the type 2 osteogenesis imperfecta in here, type 1 collagen defect and prognosis is very bad. Lead through. This disorder has various type of, uh, maybe mild type, type 1, type 2, 3 to 10 is moderate type and type 2 is fatal type. Fatal perinatal type 2 disease is very, very, very little. And they are maybe type 2 lethal. Most fetus either die in the utero. It is as lethal. Most fetal die in the utero, or during del or die during delivery of the trauma, or shortly after delivery, <laughs> due to pulmonary hypoplasia. Infant who survive are given uh, supportive care. Then amniotic band sequence. If we divide the congenital anomaly into this type, like deformation, disruption, like this deformation, disruption, dysplasia, and malformation, the amniotic band sequence is would be in the disruption. That means destruction of structure that was previously developing normally. Destruction of the structure that was developing previously normally. Amputation band sequence as it is limb defect, amputation hand defect, cleft foot, uh, craniofacial abdominal, abdominal wall defect does not present as bone fracture, and it is not typically as lethal. There may be birth trauma. Birth trauma is most frequently associated with fetal mac. Somia fetal macro big fetus and there may be shoulder distribution. This is the two most common cause of <coughs> birth trauma. Uh, due to shoulder distribution, there are uh, maneuvers that can result in isolated fracture like clavicle and humerus. There are multiple uh, maneuvers present, Mac Roberts maneuver and other maneuvers where there can be. Hmm. Isolated fracture like uh, clavicle and humerus and Potter sequence is a lethal anomaly. Potter, pulmonary hypoplasia, oligohydromnia, oligo twisted face, twisted skin, and renal agenesis, twisted face, twisted skin, esophageal problem, and renal <coughs> agenesis. There is no association with limb fracture. In Potter, there is no associated with limb fracture. Maternal vitamin D deficiency can associated with fetal growth restriction, not fetal growth restriction, not with fracture or intrauterine fetal demise. <laughs> then the very high yield. Then neural tube defect. These neural tube defect 
types of neural defect may be anencephaly, may be encephalocele, there may be spina bifida. <coughs> Neural tube defect, maybe anencephaly, absence of head, absence of calvarium. These baby has some sort of absence of calvarium, uh, anencephaly, and there may be encephalocell, there may be spina bifida, and mild meningocele due to low folate intake. Maybe patient with RA and having a methotrexate without taking the folate supplement. And is having anti epileptics, uh, diabetes, and prior pregnancy with neural tube defect. Neural tube defect. Prenatal screening is second trimester ultrasound. Se uh, in second trimester ultrasound, we may found this type of congenital anomaly, and there may be high serum uh, alpha fetoprotein. Average risk is 0.4 milligram folic. Acid daily high risk is four milligram for acid daily prevention. Average risk patient should be 0.4 milligram daily, and if the patient is a high risk, like a patient is having some sort of anti epileptic drug, and he has a prior uh, history of he has he has previous history of such a uh, disease. Uh, he has previous history of such disease. Mm, this can cause uh, NTD. This can cause NTD. Neural tube defect. Screening for neural tube defect over 15 to 20 weeks of gestation with measurement of serum, uh, measure uh, maternal serum, high maternal screening of neural tube defect occurs uh, at 15 to 20 weeks of gestation with measurement of maternal serum alpha fetoprotein a glycoprotein produced by the fetus if abnormally elevated maternal serum alpha fetoprotein more than 2.5 suggests neural tube defect so this value must be remembered more than 2.50 millimole uh, suggest neural tube defect suggest neural tube defect So an <clears throat> now <clears throat> anencephaly on all the sound absent cranium there is orbit there is nose but absent cranium and encephaly is diagnosed by fetal ultrasound, which is typically revealed absent cerebrum or calvarium, abnormal cerebellum or brainstem, and polyhydromnias. Average risk patient 0.4 mg folic acid daily, but high risk patient prior affected pregnancy and anti epileptic drug 4 mg daily. This is high yield. This is a simple thing, but we have to focus on these things. <clears throat> Second trimester quadruple screening. One, two, three, four. Okay. Second trimester <coughs> quadruple screening. Maternal serum alpha beta protein, beta HCG, estradiol. Then A. Maternal serum alpha beta protein. Uh, beta HCG trial and angina in trial in 2018 all goes down in human normally in trials of 15 21 
he he drives little you know one we know high up uh, because you know he been up and in neural field diffuse all are normal except except me neural field defect and abdominal defect there is increased maternal serum alpha fetoprotein if maternal serum alpha fetoprotein is high in the second trimester diagnosis is early there may be a neural tube defect or abdominal defect to find it out this by doing anomaly scan you can uh, <coughs> go through this cell free fetal dna testing when it is done it is done in maternal age if the maternal age is more than 35 maternal serum screening test Sonographic finding associated with fetal anoploidy, previous pregnancy with fetal anoploidy, paternal balanced Robertsonian translocation, paternal balanced Robertsonian translocation, <coughs> screening with trisomy 21, 18, 13, and 6 chromosome anoploidies, and fetal sex determination. It is indication if maternal age is more than 35. Abnormal maternal serum screening test, sonographic finding, and sonographic finding associated with fetal anoploidy, previous pregnancy with fetal anoploidy, and paternal balanced Robertsonian translocation. Women age more than 35 in advanced maternal age are increased risk of fetal anoploidy and are offered uh, cell free uh, fetal DNA testing and of maternal plasma. Other indications include abnormal maternal serum screening test, quadruple skin, non-invasive cell-free fetal DNA testing performed more than 10 weeks of gestation. And has a high sensitivity and specificity for detecting trisomy 21. Okay. <clears throat> High serum, high maternal serum alpha fetoprotein. High maternal serum alpha fetoprotein is seen in open neural tube defect, ventral wall defect, and multiple suspicions. High maternal serum alpha fetoprotein is seen in anencephalian sp uh, open spina bifida, ventral wall defect, home fellowship, and gastroschisis multiple multiple gestation and low serum maternal serum alpha fetoprotein is seen in trisomy 18 and trisomy 21 trisomy 18 and trisomy 21 uh, serum alpha fetoprotein alpha fetoprotein is a major protein produced by fetal yolk sac liver and GI tract Maternal serum alpha fetoprotein is measured 15 to 20 weeks of gestation, optimally 16 to 18 weeks. To screen for fetal anomalies, maternal serum alpha fetoprotein is primarily used to screen open neural tube defect. Increased levels are associated with fetal abdominal wall defect. <coughs> Abdominal wall defect like gastroscisis and home fellowship less commonly seen in multiple gestation. Less uh, increased maternal serum alpha fetoprotein can be seen in fetal congenital nephrosis and benign obstructive neuropathy. Benign obstructive neuropathy. An elevated maternal serum alpha fetoprotein warrants. Careful ultrasound evaluation of the fetus. If, in addition, the number of the fetus should be clarified as multiple gestation may produce more alpha fetoprotein. Gestational <coughs> age is also confirmed as interpreted. Gestational age is also confirmed as interpretation as alpha fetoprotein. As interpretation of the alpha fetoprotein depends on the accurate gestational age. 
elevated levels of alpha fetoprotein can be seen in patients with hepatocellular carcinoma, tumors of the gonadal origin, and liver disease, tumors of the gonadal origin, and liver disease. Posterior urethral valves. Posterior urethral valve is a congenital disorder commonly diagnosed as prenatal ultrasound. The prenatal commonly diagnosed on prenatal ultrasound. Posterior urethral valve is the result of abnormal car system. Result of abnormal car system urethral valve. Abnormal car system urethral valve that causes bladder outlet obstruction that causes bladder outlet obstruction may resulting in urinary obstruction. <laughs> urinary obstruction leading to urinary obstruction leading to dilated like dilated posterior dilated posterior urethra and bladder dysfunction, dilated posterior urethra and bladder dysfunction and fluid filled abdominal mass with increasing backup of the urine, hydronephrosis may develop with increasing backup of urine, hydronephrosis may develop decreased fetal output and subsequent oligohydramnios and subsequent oligohydramnios as in as the amniotic fluid is primarily composed of fetal level. Prolonged and early onset oligohydramnios at 21 weeks associated with high morbidity and mortality. The most uh, significant sequelae is pulmonary hypoplasia. Pulmonary hypoplasia uh, because amniotic fluid is required for lung development. <coughs> Another complication include Flat faces, limb deformity, flat faces, limb deformity, and water sequence, flat faces, limb deformity, water sequence, treatment of uh, posterior urethral valve is typically typical cause of uh, the prognosis is typically poor. And shoulder dysplasia. Shoulder dystocia. In shoulder dystocia, failure of the usual obstetric maneuver to deliver fetal shoulder. Failure of the usual obstetric maneuver to deliver fetal shoulder is called shoulder dystocia. It may be due to fetal macrosomy, maternal obesity, excessive pregnancy, weight gain, GDM, post term pregnancy. Warning sign is protracted labor and retention of the fetal head into the perineum after delivery. Hmm, there may be turtle sign. This is the warning sign. So you have done multiple maneuver but unable to deliver unable to deliver the fetal shoulder, unable to deliver the fetal shoulder diagnosis done. That is shoulder dystocia and shoulder dystocia may be maternal GDM macrosomia fetal macrosomia maternal uh, weight gain excessive pregnancy weight gain maternal obesity and post-term pregnancy these are the cause and the warning sign is protracted liver and retraction of the fetal head into the perineum after delivery. The major risk factor for shoulder dystocia is mm, fetal macrosomia is defined as fetal weight more than 4.5 kg that predispose to macrosomia include post-term pregnancy more than 42 weeks of gestation, maternal obesity, diabetes mellitus and excessive maternal weight gain during pregnancy. Shoulder dystocia is commonly occurs in patient with no risk factor and can be difficult to predict. Maternal signs of impending dystocia 
destruction without failure constant second stage of labor with fraction of the head into the perineum after delivery sound system management of the shoulder delivery be calm that means press but don't 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 push elevate leg press but don't push elevate leg flex head elevate leg flex head and thigh against the abdomen Macrovers call for the applying suprapubic pressure enlarge vaginal opening by enlarge vaginal opening by a tissue or something and then maneuver deliver posterior arm rotate posterior shoulder deliver posterior arm rotate posterior shoulder with screw apply pressure on the anterior aspect of the posterior shoulder Adduct posterior, adduct posterior, fetal shoulder. Apply pressure to the posterior aspect of the posterior shoulder. Mother on the hands and kneel. Full force. Replace fetal head into the pelvis for cesarean delivery. It's an obstetric emergency that can lead to both maternal and fetal complication. Maternal and fetal complication. Fetal complication include brachial plexus injury, uh, clavicular or humeral fracture, hypoxic encephalopathy. Maternal complication include fourth degree perineal laceration and PPH. Fourth degree larva means rectal mucosa is involved and they are called PPH. This is a procedure. This is the procedure. This is macrovers maneuver. Leg flexed onto the abdomen causes rotation, causes rotation of the pelvis and alignment of the sacrum of the and opening of the birth canal. Suprapubic pressure. Complication of uh, shoulder dystocia, there may be fracture clavicle, there may be fracture humerus, there may be arm pressure, there may be arc pulse, there may be clumsy pulse, there may be perinatal aspect of shape. There is lots of thing in detail, but uh, you have to cut short of these things because complication of the shoulder dystocia, uh, uh, there may be fracture clavicle. <coughs> So how will you diagnose fracture clavicle, clavicular pipitus or bone irregularity, decreased moral reflex, decreased moral reflex due to pain on the affected skull and intact biceps or grasp reflex, intact biceps or grasp reflex. So fracture clavicle, how will you diagnose there may be uh, clavicular pipitus and bony or bony irregularity decrease moral reflex and intact bicep and grass reflex or fracture humerus there may be upper arm pipitus or bony irregularity decrease moral reflex due to pain on the affected side and intact biceps and grass reflex there may be arm spots arm fusion spots decrease more and biceps reflex of the affected side, pelvic arm extended, pelvic extended in into arm pride, and wrist and finger flex into grasp reflex. Clumps is pulse in claw hand. Extended wrist. Extended wrist. Hyperextended metacarpal joint, hyperextended metacarpal joint, and flexed into phalangeal joint and absent grasp reflex. Extended wrist, hyperextended metacarpal joint, and flexed interphalangeal joint. And in perinatal asphyxia, there may be variable present depending on the duration of the hypoxia. There may be altered mental status, irritability, lethargy respiratory feeding difficulty or prone seizure fetal macrocinosis is reported for shoulder dystocia several maternal risk factors 
ଡୋଣ୍ଟ କଣ୍ଟ୍ରିବ୍ୟୁଟ୍ ନାଇ ଓବିସିଟି ମାଲ୍ଟିପାରିଟି ଆମେ କଣ୍ଟ୍ରିବ୍ୟୁଟ୍ ହୁଇଜ ଫିଟଲ ମ୍ୟାକ୍ରୋଜ ଅଫ ଦ ଆର୍ଟ ବ୍ରୁସେଲ୍ସ ପଲିସି ଦ ମୋଷ୍ଟ କମନ ଟାଇପ ଅଫ ବ୍ରାକିଅଲ ପ୍ଲେସେସ ଇଞ୍ଜୁରୀ ହୁଇଜ ଇନଭଲ୍ସ ଫିଟ C5 to C7 uh, cervical nerve C5 to C7 cervical nerve that means upper trunk paralysis causes or palsy lower trunk paralysis causes Plumkis palsy it may be wetter tips management here observation and physical therapy up to 80% of the patient has a spontaneous recovery if physical therapy is get they may get spontaneous recover within 3 months surgical intervention nerve graft reconstruction and decompression for infants with no improvement by age 3 to 9 months and is not necessarily curative <coughs> the trunk case paralysis is a brachial based injury caused by shoulder dystocia it c8 to t1 paralysis claw and flexion of the interphalangeal joint hyperextension of the metaphyseal phalangeal joint so extension of the wrist there may be other features also there may be other features also that there may be myosis or closing or there may be physical therapy to prevent the contraction treatment physical therapy with no improvement by the age 3 months surgical intervention may be considered neonatal displaced cavity of fracture fetal macrosomia instrumental delivery and shoulder dystocia fetal macrosomia instrumental delivery and shoulder dystocia crying pain with passive uh, crying pain with passive motion of the hip their extremity crepitus of the clavicle and asymmetric monoreflex diagnosis is physical treatment reassuring gentle handling analgesic sick neonatal displaced cervical nerve fracture with stress prevent reassuring gentle handling analgesic and placed uh, affected long sleep garment with thin sleep with stress with elbow flex and 90 degree <coughs> nutrition in pregnancy weight gain in case of bmi less than 18.5 weight gain should be 12 kg 18.5 to 24.9 weight gain should be 11 to 15 11 to 16 maybe and for 25 to 29 6.8 to 11.4 kg and more than 30 up to 9 kg 5 to 9 kg supplemental supplementation avoid harmful substance like avoiding fish with high marker level moderate caffeine intake and food safety avoid undercooked meat fish eggs clean raw of fruits clean raw fruits and vegetables avoid unprocessed dairy food women with normal pre pregnancy bmi 18.5 to 24.5 should gain 11.4 to 15.9 kg if they do not gain if they are gain weight less than this then underweight baby may be found if they gain more than very uh, if they gain very higher than this then fetal macrosomia may happen probiotic lactobacillus intake during pregnancy may have some maternal benefit like um, anti inflammation improve glucose metabolism but data are limited opioid substitution therapy methadone and prescription is a first line treatment for opioid dependent uh, pregnant patient protein dependent patient with patient methadone and buprenorphine norfin for first line treatment <clears throat> neonatal abstinence system is ex- expected but manageable compared with the abstinence it is safer and necessary to improve maternal and neonatal outcomes and lower risk of failure doses increases typically are required due to 
Thank you, Metabolism related to basic maintenance flow syndrome. Please stick it, but please manage it. Okay, this is a 10 page top strategy. Hope you enjoyed.